Welcome back, guys. It's Ms. McCauley. I'm back to talk to you about Boyle's Law. So what you've learned from the intro notes is that as pressure goes up, volume goes down, keeping everything else like temperature constant. Um, that's an indirect relationship, and we can use that relation to write this equation. P1 times V1 is always equal to P2 times V2. It's not quite um, a linear um, relationship here when we've drawn it, but we have that indirect proportion. Okay, let's go over some practice problems. Remember that you should have these done, and now we're just going over and checking them all. So question A, a sample of helium gas occupies a volume of 450 point. Now, why is that point there? Because it's giving us some sig fig information. So we've got one, two, three sig figs. The point makes that zero significant. Um, at 755, we got one, two, three sig figs there too, millimeters of mercury of pressure. If the pressure were increased to 810, making that last zero significant there, then what's the final volume V2? So when we look at this, we want to first kind of diagram the problem. So the initial system, volume of 450, that's our V1. Our initial pressure, that's our P1. Pressure is increased, so now our second pressure is here. We're looking for um, what's the final volume V2. Oh, got to keep my color coding straight here. That should be P2. Okay, so let's go through and look at this. So what was pressure 1 from the problem? 755. What was volume one? 450 point. What's P2? 810. And what's V2? Question mark. So before we begin, we want to ask ourselves a couple questions. Did pressure go up or down? Here's initial, here's final. 755 needs to go up to get to 810. So we have just said at the beginning that if one goes up, the other goes down. So if pressure goes up, what do we expect volume to do? We expect it to go down. So when we look right here, if volume's 450, my V2 must be less than 450. That's the check we're going to do. So let's solve the problem. <clears throat> so here's the initial equation. Please always start by writing that. And then we're going to plug in and go through the math. So P1, we're going to substitute in 755. V1, substitute in 450. P2, what goes there? 810. And V2, we don't know. So how do we get V2 by itself? We need to do some algebra. So we've got to get this from this side. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide the whole thing by that term. So if you need it, I, if you need it, I've rewritten the math here. So my algebra from this right here goes right up to here. So in our calculator, we're going to take 755 times 450 and then divide that by 810. That will give us our calculator answer, which is good, but too precise. If you look back to the original problem, how many sig figs were we given? Three. We're multiplying and dividing, so that means we keep that least total number. So one, two, three. The nine is the third sig fig. Look to the right. What does the four do to the nine? Keeps it the same. So 419 is our final answer. Now, before we're done, we have to do our check. Before we expected the volume to go down, it should be less than 450. Is 419 less than 450? Yes, that means everything went correctly. If we had said no, that means you have an algebra mistake somewhere in your problem. Go back and fix it. Okay, let's try problem B. A sample of carbon dioxide occupies a volume... So let's start diagramming our, our problem here. A volume of 6.9 liters, so volume 1, at 120 kPa. So this is our pressure 1. Now let's just kind of take a sig fig look right here. Two sig figs, two sig figs. That zero as a placeholder doesn't count. We got two sig figs. So I can make myself a little note down here. I know I'm going to need to round to two sig figs when I get to my final answer. Okay. So then what pressure, so P2 equals question mark, what's my final pressure, would the gas exert if the volume decreased to 2.3? So this is going to be my V2. Okay, now let's go through and start my pre-problem work. Pressure 1 from the problem is 120 kilopascals. Volume 1 is 6.9 liters. Pressure 2 we do not know, we are trying to solve for. That's the whole point right now. And volume 2 is liters. Now everything looks good here. We got liters and liters. If we had like a milliliter in there, we'd have to convert to the same terms. And we're given KPA, that means we're going to get KPA out. 
So what happened to the volume? Did it go up or down? From the initial to the final, the volume went down. That means that my pressure has to go up. So if it was original 120, this number should be higher than 120 and probably quite a bit higher. There's a pretty big drop there. So first things first, please always rewrite the formula. Pressure one, volume one equals pressure two, volume two. Then we just have to substitute in. So pressure one is 120. Volume one is 6.9. That'll equal to pressure two, which we don't know. That's the variable we're solving for. And then volume two. Okay, how do I get pressure two by itself? I need to do some algebra. We have to divide out that 2.3. Now I'm writing it like this. I'm dividing both sides by 2.3. If it makes it feel better, put it over here and over there. Doesn't really matter. Take out your handy dandy calculator of science. Take 120 times 6.9. That's the left side, then we've got to divide by 2.3. Let's see, did I do that right? 360 kPa. Now here's the nice part, two sig figs. That already has two sig figs because that zero is a placeholder. So remember that the number 360 is not the same as 360 point, okay? That has three sig figs, that has two, so we're all good. But we have to check our, our final check. Did the change in pressure um, indeed act as you predicted? So we thought that pressure should go up because volume went down, pressure should go up. So did it go up above 120? Yes, and it went quite above, up above 120. So that means we are all good. On to the next page. Okay, so same stuff on the next page. Let me get this going here. So remember our initial equation, pressure one, volume one equals pressure two, volume two. I'll try and move through a little bit quicker, but if you need time, pause the video, stop, work out those algebra problems on your own. So at a 26.8 milliliter container, now this is different. We're given milliliters, that's still fine. Um, we can keep that in the problem because they're proportions. It just means the final answer we'll get out will also be milliliters. So volume one, is 26.8 milliliters. That container of methane had a pressure of 2.9 atmospheres. So my initial pressure is 2.9. What volume would be necessary? So we are looking for V2. V2 equals question mark right here. Um, to decrease the pressure to one atmosphere. So our second pressure is one atmosphere. Atmosphere to atmosphere, fine. Milliliter, we're going to be getting that final answer in milliliter. If the problem asks for liters, we'd have to do an extra conversion step. So first things first, did the pressure go up or down? The pressure went down. Remember, they're indirectly related. So if pressure is down, we expect volume to go up. So let's look at our work. Pressure one, plug in your variable. Volume one, plug in your variable. Pressure two, plug it in. Volume two, plug it in. What do I need to do to get volume two by itself? I need to do some algebra. We need to divide out that 1.0. So divide out that 1.0 and your calculator answer will give you 77.72 mils, which is fine. They didn't say it couldn't be mils. How many sig figs do we need though? One, two, three, one, two, one, two. Least number of sig figs is two. So, hmm. Uh-oh, least number of sig figs is two. That means this answer isn't right. Let's fix it. So if we need to have two sig figs, one, two, look to the right, this should actually be 78 milliliters because we're multiplying dividing. It's not least number of decimals, it's least total number of sig figs. So let's do a check here. Did it act as predicted? We expected volume to go up. We went from 26.8 to 78. Yes, we are all good there. Okay, D, propane, that's like what's in most grills, um, propane gas. Propane gas occupies a volume of 1.00 gallons at a pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so pressure one is 1,000 millimeters mercury. Volume one is one gallon. Now it's fine to use gallons for this. We can mix all of our units, but just so we know, our volume two that answer will be in gallons. If they ask for something else, we'll have to look up some conversion factors. Um, what volume, what would volume two be at standard pressure? Now standard pressure, we got to think a little bit, a thousand millimeters of mercury, um, go back to your notes, what's one atmosphere? So standard pressure means one ATM. 
and one ATM in millimeters of mercury is 760. Okay, so this number you got to get from your notes. So does pressure go up or down? Pressure goes down, so we expect that volume will go up. Solve the problem. We should write down our initial equation first, P1, V1 equals P2, V2, multiplying those two together. So 1,000 millimeters of mercury times one gallon will be equal to 760 millimeters of mercury times V2. So we do some math. What kind of math do we do, everybody? Algebra. Divide each side by 760 right here. Your calculator answer will be 1.31578. Now let's see if I made a sig fig mistake. One, two, three sig figs, one, two, three, four sig figs. Um, now 760, don't get hung up on, I wrote that because that's a given definition. So how certain am I about 760? I am infinitely certain that 760, I could say 760.0000, whatever. Okay, so I'm looking at my sig figs up here. I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I need to have three sig figs then. So one, two, three, look to the right. What will the five do to the one? We'll round it up. It'll be 1.32 gallons. Now for our check. We said pressure went down, volume should go up. Volume was initially one, and now it's 1.32. Did it go up? Yes, I'm good. Last problem. An 89.0 liter sample of argon gas had its pressure changed from 32 to 15. So this is the initial volume. This is volume one. It had changed from, so this is my pressure one, to 15. This is my pressure two. What is V2? Volume two equals question mark. So pressure one, fill that in, 32.9. Volume one, 89.0, pressure two, 15 inches of mercury. Volume two is unknown. This is what we're solving for. Look at your pressure. It went down. That means volume should go up. Start with your initial equation always, please. So we've got P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Substitute in, pressure one was 32.9 inches. Volume one was 89. Pressure two is 15. Volume two is unknown. How do we get V2 by itself? Isolate and solve. Divide 15 out on both sides. That will give you a calculator answer of 195.2066. Uh, we probably should verify that. 32.9 times 89. That's what's on the left side. Then we got to divide out that 15. 195.2066. Okay. How many sig figs? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I need three sig figs. What did I do here? I did something crazy. Let's see how many sig figs I listed. Oh no, maybe I did it right. Okay, one, two, three. Two doesn't round up to five, 195 liters. Now let's do our check. Pressure went down. That means volume should go up. 89 to 195, did that go up like we expected? Yes, we did it. That's the end of this. My recording got turned off there at the end. Hopefully we're in the right spot right here. So we were just saying we got a round to three sig figs. One, two, three. That will keep it the same. We're going to have 195 liters. Pressure went down. Volume should go up. 89 to 195. Did volume go up? Yes, it did. So great work today, guys. Remember, don't wait to be great.